recording. All right, folks, welcome to Melwani. With us today, we have the legend himself, Dan Lilker of Nuclear Assault. How are you doing, Dan? All right, how are you doing? I'm doing good. So, you guys are playing in FMR today, Eindhoven. Is this for the first time you've come here and played? This is the first time Nuclear Assault has played this festival. Mm -hmm. I was here at the Eindhoven Metal Meeting a couple of years ago with Brutal Truth. Okay. And Nuclear Assault has played like the Dynamo this right, right, year, right. but mm -hmm. if you mean this festival, then officially, then this would be the first Nuclear Assault Eindhoven Metal Meeting performance, ah, yeah. Cool, and, and you guys have been playing in South, Am South America sometime back, and, and some minor festivals here and there, so, which is like a farewell trip in yeah. Europe. So, how's been the response in terms of fans getting to see the band together for the first, last time in Europe? Oh, it's been um, all the shows that we did in the summer that were uh, over here in Europe mm -hmm. and in South America were really cool. Um, mm -hmm. People, uh, of course, people are you know a little bit like, well, it's just less, yeah. you know, but um, you know, we're pretty old now. <laughs> that's, so, that's but no, it's been very enthusiastic and supportive, and people have said, you know, your music has meant a lot to me, and especially you know, twenty-year-old kids who weren't even born when Game Over came yeah. out coming up and going, I'm so glad I got to see you, you know, I know that you guys are very important in the thrash metal history, blah, 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 and so it was very meaningful for us. So. That's awesome, and you've, you've probably seen generations of, of fans, I mean, let's say, because the band has been around for, for 30 odd years, three right. decades, so you probably get to see, let's say, a son, a father, and a grandfather seeing thrash metal band together. Yeah, so you would have seen that happening from, from, la from 80s till now. Well, sure, because, uh, if there were people who were into nuclear assault back then who were maybe a little older than us, then mm -hmm. it's perfectly possible that they could have had kids. You could have had kids by now. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe when they were all 16 when they had a kid, but <laughs> still, sure, it's possible. Right, and and for you in general, I mean, uh, playing with, the, with all your friends over here, is this a specific band you're looking forward to see at you know, Idol today or tomorrow? Um, tonight, I'm looking forward to seeing Niflheim and Behemoth. Uh -huh. Tomorrow, uh, Marduk, who plays after us. Right. And there's other bands, I just don't remember them all, because okay. we're the Netherlands where you can easily obtain marijuana. Ah, uh, right. And and we had this Paris incident happening you know, a few weeks ago where the bands we're doing had to kind of think about playing again, and some went back home, some continued. And I mean, since uh, I was not been on tour, but is that something which kind of concerned you about the safety here in terms of playing? Because, you know, we never know what's happening right now, looking at of course, what happened in Paris? Well, we just, you can't let it, uh, look, you know, we were in New York when 9-11 happened. Mm -hmm. you know, I was living in New York City then. And you just have to take an attitude like you can't let it stop you. You can't, you have to figure percentage-wise, it's almost impossible that it's going to happen to you. Right. And also, but more in a, a spirited way that you can't fear it and say, yeah, I'm not going to do what I want mm -hmm. because of, I mean, you know, those motherfuckers are crazy, you know, people like ISIS, that's, I mean, they're also killing other Muslims, those people are just absolutely... Everyone. Yeah, they don't give a shit about anything, they don't, they're dangerous, psychotic people doing stuff under the name of religion, and by the way, most Americans understand, because, uh, don't listen to Donald Trump, by the way. <laughs> when you think He's about an it. asshole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, to answer your question generally, of course, we said, well, I hope it'll be okay, but... You know, we're not going to say, we're not coming because we're scared. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you I totally can't understand. do that. And, and you guys had a plan of uh, writing an album and releasing it, and which eventually led to an EP album, which came out this year. Yeah. So, why was this uh, shift into because uh, an album decided earlier and then an EP? Was it something about the quality of the songs? Because you had four or five tracks on this, you wanted to make sure that the quality of Nuclear Salt is maintained even after three decades? Wow, you already answered the question. Um, <laughs> Originally, I went on Facebook before we made a lot of plans and said, we're going to do a whole new record. And then all these shows got st started getting booked for yeah. last summer. And we mm -hmm. said, shit, we don't have time. We all live in different cities except oh, me yeah. and Eric, mm -hmm. the guitar player. We don't have time to craft a whole record and write it, rehearse it, record it, mix it, all this stuff in nine months or something. All right. So let's, we said, let's be realistic. Mm -hmm. Let's make an EP. Let's to four songs with complete quality control and that's enough to write, record and release in this time period. So we made the decision to just scale it down. Mm -hmm. We could have put out 50 minutes of shit. Yeah, <laughs> but it's good to have a quality over, you know, quantity any day. That's exactly what we decided to go to do. So 
I'm sorry if I led people to believe we were going to do more. <laughs> That's on me, and I'm a dumbass. <laughs> well, uh, is there any plan of writing something again in future about nuclear sound? Or is there something being written which you guys probably might think to release down the road? We just leave things open. If the band's pretty much going to be finished as far as going out and touring. I mean, so I don't think so, but you never know. I, I never say never because, you know, uh, there's always some kind of demands and you have to balance the demands with what you can realistically do. But that again comes to the same point that, that fans are going to be disappointed that probably Pounder is the last thing we can hear from Nuclear Assault. Yeah, I know, and I hate to disappoint people. <laughs> so it's easier, it's much easier to record these days, but with a band like Nuclear Assault, it's not going to be something where do the drums in one place and send and then, them. Yeah, yeah. It's better to be in the same room and have this, you know, for playing thrash, it's you can't just make a record through MP3s and email or something. Right, right. And you have Venomous Concept uh, as well. Yeah, and I'll be back yeah. next month with that. Yeah, and are you guys planning any tour with that? Now that yeah, you know, well, Napalm is kind of slowly being, you know, they'll be kind of resting and then they have a tour coming up in North America. So is there something planned about Venomous Concept? Actually, there is in one month. Mm -hmm. We'll be back over here with Venomous Concept and that's going to be in England, France, Italy, Germany. Oh, so you're basically covering uh, Czech, Europe. Yeah, Scandinavia. Yeah, we're going to do a lot of stuff in three weeks. Ah. So I'll be back here again with That's a warmer jack. <laughs> Amazing. And then, you know, you've you've been part of, you know, you've you played with Anthrax and then, you know, SOD and Nuclear Assault. You've been there from 80s, right? Then where, where all the thrash metal started. And we also had Teutonic Thrash here happening in Germany with Creator Destruction. Oh, well, that stuff is beautiful. Yeah, right? and, and over the period of time, uh, slowly, uh, the the so-called Big Four slowly stripped down, and but the, the Teutonic, Except Slayer. yeah, but Teutonic thrash metal band still maintained the aggression. Was that kind of a letdown for you personally, as a as a fan? That you know, what what changed? What triggered the change? Maybe Black Album, of Metallica did it all for them. I think by the time the Black Album came out, I was already like discovering Napalm Death, so I almost didn't really care anymore. Mm -hmm. I was more disappointed when the black metal bands in the '80s started. Like Bathory went to Viking and Celtic Cross put out Cold Blade yeah. and Destruction got very technical and not from as grim and basic. But the thing is, I never say, oh, this band sold out or anything. Yeah. People, I, I understand as a musician, you have to do what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it's good to play what people want to hear, but you have to want it to hear it too. Absolutely. So if you're not into doing that, then you do something else. Probably to some extent Overkill maintained it over the period of time and still they're, you know, going strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overkill, yeah, I forgot about that. I mean, fucking Man of War. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Fistful of Metal is considered as a trash metal classic and, and you were, you know, one of the songwriters on that album. Mm -hmm. So this is something, you know, some amazing memories you have of that album when you guys were writing and recording it, you know, with Scott and the other guys. So we were just like kids in the studio, you know, um, and uh, no, it was just a very exciting time because that's when thrash metal was pretty much starting and yeah. everybody was making their own path, you know, so everybody had their own sound. And so now you have bands that sound like a mixture of this and that, but yeah. it's understandable, it's hard to be pure with something. But it shows that thrash metal in, in general is a legitimate form of music like jazz or folk or rock like in the history books you know it can't be ignored right you know not that this rat metal shit <laughs> came and went and that's good <laughs> <laughs> and you know for you since you being in any band you've been part of you've been the main one of the main songwriter i mean be it uh, with, with sod or you know anthrax first album or even nuclear assault so three decades of songwriting uh, how, how have you faced like as an improvement as a songwriter over the period of time for, from your personal side writing songs is a very organic natural thing it's very hard to analyze it and step outside myself it's mm -hmm. just a creative process and i can say that i know if i come up with something in my brain like what it's appropriate like this can be a grindcore riff okay but this will not work for for a grindcore it should be a thrash metal riff and i don't know i just that's what i do i write music i'm not good on the business side i'm not going to sell t-shirts or any shit like that i don't write lyrics you know i leave that for people who are more articulate articulate than me but um 
No, I just, I've always just written whatever the fuck I wanted. I've always done whatever the fuck I wanted. And maybe that's my secret, you know, because I just, I don't give a shit. I don't worry about, you know, who's, I don't care about anything that anybody says or message boards or any bullshit. <laughs> I don't care. I just block everything and literally, you know, in my brain, not some deleting some posts. I just mean, I just pay no attention to anything except what's important for me. Mm -hmm. And... I write music at three in the morning, maybe if I can't sleep, and I smoke a joint and I come up with something interesting. You know? <laughs> That's amazing, and you know we have the new Anthrax album coming up. So for you, who's been your favorite singer on the Anthrax metal? Is it John or Belladonna or let's say Turbin? So which do you feel has like power? That's hard to say. They all have their own qualities. You know, Neil was the most metal vocalist. You know, Joey was good, but I think it was a little too clean for me. And John was a very talented singer, but, uh, you know, he was almost more like a rock singer to me. Okay. Yeah. But, I don't know, I don't really listen to them. And uh, for you, what's the next phase after Venomous concert? After the tour, like you said, you will be doing some shows in Europe. Uh, I don't have any plans right now. Mm -hmm. After that, I'm going to uh, relax at home and then, who knows, maybe I'll do some shows with Lockup because I'm always replacing shame. And, 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 so, just keeping it open now and uh, seeing what happens. And if not, then uh, stay home with my wife and relax. So, no music from, uh, you know, Daniel from now? Oh, no, no, I play... Maybe, you know, did you ever thought of writing a solo album, like, you know? I play in two local bands where I live. Mm -hmm. I play black metal and grindcore. Mm -hmm. Nocturnal Hellstorm is the black metal bands and Blurring is the grindcore band. So, I'm keeping busy at home playing extreme music. Okay. And as far as another touring band or whatever, I don't know. You so know? touring basically is the end, yeah. Almost, yeah. I always say that, but then something else happens. <laughs> happens, okay. Yeah. So, you know, we know that the, the, the festivals which, are, which obviously are happening with, with Maiden or Priest or, you know, Sabbath headlining and after that, you know, what do you, where do you see the next set of bands who have that power in them and, you know, to headline festivals after these guys are, let's say, they stop touring? Oh, I don't really know. I uh, I don't pay attention to a lot of stuff, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, I just am very insular. As far as what bands have that kind of... I don't really know, because bands regenerate, like styles regenerate. Like yeah. thrash metal comes back with bands like Municipal Waste and everything like that. So, I don't know, I don't pay attention. Or actually care. Alright, and uh, is there any possibility of seeing you play in India for your fans, maybe with, you know, with a nuclear assault, maybe one-off show in India and then, you know, more like a... a well, that would be interesting because that's somewhere we never played. You know, one thing we said was, we'll finish touring, you know, unless something very interesting comes up. So, if there's a realistic situation, then that's something that we could contemplate, but um, I don't know, we haven't had any kind of offers from okay. even that part of the world, so... Hopefully it might happen on the road. So that's about it. Dan Lilke here, took out some time for us, thanks a lot. Alright, cheers. And meeting you and, and having a chat with you, so I look forward to see you guys tomorrow. This is going to be my first time, so... Yeah, I'd like to apologize to everybody in India if we haven't been there yet, and maybe we'll come there eventually. <laughs> and, you know, rolls the joint. <laughs> yeah. Fernando, done?